thought I'd make a little video here of what to do if you start having problems with um, your Kensington trackball, uh, Kensington Slim Bit and Blade trackball. I didn't see anything like this up here on, on YouTube yet, so I, I thought I'd make a quick one. Uh, this is not going to be like a, a complete blow-by-blow start-to-finish thing. I'm just going to show you the things you're, you need to know. And if you're handy fixing things like this, it'll be no problem after you see this. Okay, uh, first of all, getting into it, when you, when you look at, at it to begin with, it's kind of hard to see how the thing comes apart. But um, the uh, screws are underneath the rubber feet, so you got to take the rubber feet out. They're kind of held in place by contact cement, so I'm hoping when I put it back together that uh, the, there will be enough old glue there, otherwise I'm going to have to use some contact cement. But anyway, there's a screw underneath each one of the uh, feet. You've got to pull, pull away to, uh, to get at it. And then you've got to take off this ring, this rubber ring, and then there are three more screws there. Then it comes apart. Um, uh, the end pieces are rubber and they've got little magnets in them, so make sure you don't lose the magnet. I don't know if you need the magnet. I think the magnet is if you're hooking it up to some other piece of Kensington something or other that I don't have, but maybe you do. Um, so you need that. And that's also uh, got some contact cement on it, and I'm hoping there's going to be enough there for me to put it back together without adding more. But if I have to add more, I will. Uh, anyway, the, uh, when your switch goes bad, there's only, only one, one way to fix it, and that's replace the, the, the switch, these little switches. And this is the, the toughest thing, um, that uh, uh, just finding out what switch it was supposed to be. Because <laughs> I looked around, and I, I finally, finally fi found it in somebody else's post, uh, digging around a bit. Um, and they're readily available from places like, uh, like Mouser and DigiKey. Uh, I got mine from Mouser. They're pretty inexpensive, 55 cents. The only problem is you need to pay for the handling fee, which is about five bucks with uh, with Mouser. So hopefully you can get it in on another order of other stuff. Anyway, just basic soldering. Uh, the old one comes out a little difficult because it's using that ROHS compliant type of uh, uh, tinny sort of uh, solder. It doesn't heat up all that well, but you can work it out. And I used a, a vacuum to uh to pull the rest of the solder out the uh the pins on the uh the, the switch are pretty big um and, and so you gotta you have to uh um, make sure the hole is pretty well cleaned out um i don't know if it's important or not but i put it in the same way it is there you can see like on, on the, the actual actuating element has like a little blade on it and i oriented that the same way as all the other four and right now i'm only placing one of them because uh uh, only one of them is bad. <laughs> and, and it's also, uh, you'll notice too here that you've got these uh, these cable things, but it's quite easy to, to get at the switch and um, re replace it without uh, taking off those cable connections. And I figure uh, that's just another opportunity to break something. So if you don't have to do it, might as well not. Um, I'll put this information also in the, uh, uh, um, the, the comments, but... Uh, Here's the mouser part number 612-TL1140AF070Q. And the manufacturer part uh, number, it's, it's called an e-switch. Um, the manufacturer part number is TL1140AF070Q. Again, I'll put that in the, uh, the comments. But uh, that's all you need to know. Um, replace the switch and uh, it should be back to normal.